So welcome to this session. My name is Paul Steinle. It's been a long journey here, 31,000 miles. Started in June of 2010 in Oklahoma, and here it is in Missouri. We went the long way that we went through the other 49 states to get here. So it took us a while. So these conventions are always great fun. I've been coming since 91, since I've been teaching. The great things about these conventions are seeing your friends and seeing your colleagues and seeing what they're doing. That's one of the important things. The second one is to collect new ideas. And so uh, that's why we're here today, to try to give you a new idea, or at least a new paradigm, if we can, about what we think is happening uh, to newspapers in the United States. So. Uh, we're going to talk about this idea, which we call the transformational newspaper, not the dying newspaper. And also, we want to tell you a little bit about our website. The origins of the project. Um, there are many stories to this, but essentially, I think it mentioned somewhere, I was the president of UPI for a couple of years, from 88 to 90. And it, it introduced me to newspapers. I got to go around the country and visit a lot of newspapers, and really got to see who ran them and what kind of people they were, what their value systems were. And it was really exciting to me. Uh, fast forward ahead, 2009, Southern Oregon University. We do a First Amendment forum every year. And uh, we decided to do one about the source of information in the internet. Everybody says they're going to stop reading their newspaper and go to the internet. Do they realize where that information comes from? So we came up with this smart aleck title of Who Needs Newspapers? And that's where it came from. Uh, the Project for Excellence in Journalism did a survey about three years ago. I think they found 80%, 70 to 80% of the local news that ended up on the internet or from anywhere came from the newspapers originally. So that was the source of it. And what we were really concerned about was uh, the sources of information in the United States. I mean, if newspapers were to die, God forget, but if they were, where would the information come from? Uh, so we decided to, to put together a 501c3 and create it uh, in a larger venue. We gave it the name Valid Sources because it, that's the real uh, concern that we have. Where will democracy be served? Where will the information come from? We started a 501c3. We tried to get some foundations to fund us. In the short term, they didn't. So we paid for this mostly ourselves. We have a few donors, but mostly it came out of Sarah and my pocket. We have uh, a, a board that we formed, Bruce Garrison from University of Miami is one of our board members, uh, Sig Splickle from the University of Miami, uh, Paula Duffy who is the former uh, director of the University of Chicago Press, and uh, Georgiana Vines, a former editor from Knoxville. We also got together uh, a number of what we call consulting editors, uh, associate consulting editors, we call them ACES, and uh, there are about 18 of them I think that have advised us as well. We started forward in June of, uh, as I said, 2010. And our idea was simple. Uh, let's be journalists. Let's go out and see what's really happening in the newspaper industry. We know the Chicago Tribune's in trouble. We know McClatchy's in trouble. That's important, but what about the rest of the, you know, 1,398 newspapers or whatever the number is in that range? How are they doing? So we went, uh, we decided to do this trip. And now obviously we didn't know every newspaper in the United States. And we didn't know where to go, so we started talking to people and they gave us advice. The key advice came from the newspaper uh, association managers, one in each state. And our criteria, the first one was excellence. You know, who got the General Excellence Award in recent years? We broadened that to innovation, so we added that to it. Um, we started in Salisaw, Oklahoma, with the Mayos there, uh, Jeff and Jim. Jim uh, has a throat problem, so he, his, his son translated for him, so it was really kind of fun to watch them talk. He, his son was quite loving and, and supportive of him. But we went to a, a weekly to start with, and this points out the fact that we also decided to do a spectrum of newspapers. Uh, our original goal was to do 40 dailies and 10 what we called specials, weeklies, minorities, etc. When we finished up, we ended up with 42 dailies and 8 specials, so I think we got a pretty good cross-section. We also wanted different circulation sizes. So here's uh, up to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 100, and 100 over. So it's about 25% each out of the 50 sample. And what we have created essentially is a multimedia snapshot of each newspaper. Um, we interviewed the publisher, the editor, and the online person, many of whom have different titles depending on where you go, uh, and usually the online person in charge of the news. And we also um, collected samples of five 
uh, at least five uh, enterprise stories from every newspaper. We did background information, so we've collated a, collected a database of information on circulation size, personnel, how the personnel is used, software, what the software is. Um, and, you know, it's quite a thorough picture. Um, and if you go to the website, you'll see all of this. So what are the key findings? Well, this is one of them. Um, that, you know, newspapers aren't dying. They're, they're transforming themselves. Will they die? Perhaps they will. But are they sitting there in hospice waiting to die? No, they're not doing that at all. And that's why they're very interesting, because there's so much going on in them. Uh, just talking to our speakers today uh, and listening to their stories, they're quite different from each newspaper. And uh, there's just much to learn from this. We talked to Chris Mayer at the Boston Globe back last October, and here's what he had to say. Well, if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, the volume that we're doing right now through Boston.com, if you look at the amount of mobile traffic that we have and, and, what that, uh, and how that continues to escalate, um, we have never had more consumers of our content. We have over 50% penetration in this marketplace between print and digital. So um, it really is a question of managing through the transition uh, of, uh, of consumer habits, uh, some of which will always or for a long time be in print, but, uh, but are also, um, are also uh, at uh, some level becoming more and more digital as technology makes, that, uh, makes those solutions much more compelling or much more mainstream. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really focused on, uh, on managing through the transition, but recognizing the success that we've had in terms of attracting that, uh, that readership, um, both print and digital, has been, uh, has been tremendous. Uh, Robert Blasowicz is here from uh, the Northwest Indiana Times. He's a graduate of the uh, uh, Northwestern School of Journalism, uh, Medell. He's been working at the paper for a number of years, and uh, you know he's going to give us some um, a close look at what's going on in the newsroom in the last few years and how it's changed. Barry Arthur is the assistant managing editor at the uh, Democrat Gazette. Uh, both of these gentlemen are here today, and I think they're going to be great to. Uh, to give us the background we need on what's exactly happening at these papers. So we'll flip our uh, PowerPoint and then we'll go on to their uh, presentation.